subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people. So in previous lecture we looked at various properties of systems, we looked at causality, we looked at memory, uh, memoryless systems, mem systems with memory, we looked at stability of a system. Now we are going to see how we can relate these properties of a system with its impulse response. Okay, we have already seen impulse response of a system, it is output of the system when input given is impulse signal. So now we see that how can we relate these properties to impulse response of the system. Suppose I am considering memory of a system first okay memory of a system now we saw that a system is memory less or static a system is considered as a static system or a memory less system if its output depends only on the present input only on the input that is given at the same time instance if it depends on any other input that has been given in the past then the system is known as dynamic system. So I can say that for a memory less system also we are talking only about LTI systems only linear and time invariant system. So I can say that for a system which has no memory which is memory less output of the system is going to be related with the input in by this equation y t is equal to kxt where this k is some gain only this gain is going to appear why because this y t is not depending upon any past values of the input it depends only on the present value of the input the system does not have memory also the system is linear and time invariant that is why the uh, output is going to be related by some uh, equation of this form now if i talk about impulse response of the system what is the impulse response going to be? Impulse response is the output of the system when the input applied is unit impulse signal. So this is going to be k delta t. Now what can I say about this impulse response? This impulse response must exist only for one value of t which is t is equal to 0. This impulse response should not exist for any other value of t. This should be 0 for any t naught not equal to 0. That is what I can, what can I say? If h t naught is not 0 for t naught not 0 for values of t not equal to 0 if this h t naught is not 0 we will say that we say that say that system has memory system has memory or system is dynamic system dynamic system okay because for the system to be memoryless this equation must be satisfied and since this delta t is going to occur only for t is equal to 0 this h t should also occur only for t is equal to 0 which means for all values of t not equal to 0 this h t should also be equal to 0 right uh, not equal should also not be not equal to 0. So if this is not true we say that the system has memory system is dynamic. So by looking at the impulse response of the system by seeing at which points this impulse response is existing we can check the memory of the system. If the impulse response exists for only for t is equal to 0 we say that the system is static otherwise we say that the system is dynamic right. Now we look at causality of the system. So now we see causality, causality. What did we see in causality is that before the event occurs, before the excitation actually occurs, the system must not respond, system must not give the output. That is what we mean by causality. So what, what can I say? If HT, if my impulse response is 0, for all time instances less than 0, if ht is 0 for t less than 0, I can say that my system is a causal system. Now if this condition is satisfied, what is going to be the output, what happens to the output? Right, now see this ht is 0 for t less than 0. So this signal ht minus tau is going to occur from minus infinity to t only, only from minus infinity to t. 
right we can redefine the limits because this signal is going to see so you can check from the limits okay if ht is 0 for t less than 0 then what happens uh, if I just modify the limit if I want to talk about ht minus tau this is going to be 0 when t minus tau is less than 0 or or what can I say tau is greater than t right so when whenever tau is greater than t this signal is going to be 0 so this this one is going to be 0 which is why I can only this signal is going to exist only for values of tau from minus infinity to t for values of tau greater than t the signal is going to be 0 so we do not need to consider them right so the uh, this convolution integral is going to change and become something like this also if I just uh, calculate ht convolution xt what can I say Now I know that this h tau occurs only for positive values of tau so I can redefine this as 0 to infinity h tau x t minus tau d tau right. So this is how my convolution integral changes fine. Now if my input if my input x t is also causal if x t is also causal what can I say x t is 0 for t less than 0 right this is also going to be 0 for t less than 0 and xt minus tau xt minus tau is going to be 0 for t minus tau less than 0 or what can I say tau greater than t that is this signal is existing this signal xt minus tau is existing from 0 to t right so uh, what happens this integral if my signal x tau is also a causal signal if my input is also a causal signal then what happens then both these equations equation 1 and equation 2 are going to modify xt convolution xt and also xt convolution xt both of them are going to modify with limits 0 to t 0 to t or limit 0 to t fine because in this in this case this x tau is existing only from values of tau greater than 0 that is why limits changed from 0 to t and in this one in second integral this x t minus tau is existing or uh, is not existing for values of tau greater than t that is why both of them are going to become this uh, like something like this. So if you are applying a causal input to a causal LTI system the convolution is going to become something like this and how do you check causality of a system by checking its impulse response if the impulse response if this signal is causal we say that the system is causal right now we look at stability of a system how can we relate stability of a system to its impulse response. So now we look at stability of a system how can we define stability of a system using its impulse response. So we have already seen that the stability criteria that we are using in uh, defining stability of a system is BBO stability bounded input bounded output stability right BBO criteria. Now what, what are we saying in this one is suppose I say that my input xt is bounded this is bounded this is bounded means this is going to have a finite value okay this is going to lie between some finite values now I want to check whether my output is going to be bounded or not now what is my output going to be how do I define my output I define my output as ht convolution xt which can be written as minus infinity to infinity h tau xt minus tau d tau now if I want to talk about magnitude of yt value of yt what do I do I put mod on both the sides okay so this is going to be mod minus infinity to infinity h tau xt minus tau d tau now we are using Gibbs phenomena okay what does Gibbs phenomena say when you are putting mod it some like this in an integral this mod is going to be this value this is going to be less than equal to mod of individual signals 
right this is this is what Gibbs phenomena say okay so what can I say this mod of yt is going to be less than or equal to now see since this xt was a finite signal bounded signal then this xt minus tau is also going to be a bounded signal right see shifting in time domain is not going to make a difference in value of the signal if xt was bounded xt minus tau is also going to be a bounded signal shifting or reversal operations in time domain are not going to affect the value of the signal the signal is also going to be bounded with the same value so in place of this i can just put k1 k1 right okay now what can i say this yt is going to be bounded is going to have finite value only if this this impulse response is absolutely integrable absolutely integrable means on integrating this response from minus infinity to infinity i should obtain a i should obtain a finite value so what can i say if integration minus infinity to infinity of mod h tau is finite finite means should give me a finite value for one particular value then then given system is stable given system is stable be both stable right because if this this is less than or equal to k then my output is going to be less than or equal to k into k1 which is a finite value so what do i say if my impulse response is absolutely integrable then my system is going to be a stable system this is how we are taking stability of a system so we are relating uh, the different properties of a system uh, to its impulse response so that only on checking impulse response we can comment about the properties of our given system right so now we are going to look at some questions how we are determining properties of system by using the impulse response okay